All right, seven o'clock. I'm going to open up the uh, February 8th, sorry, February 10th meeting of the Wakefield Conservation Commission. I uh, will take roll call. Uh, Silvana. Here. Jimmy. Doesn't sound like Jimmy. <laughs> no, actually, it was my dog. Give me on mute. Huh? Yeah, Jimmy, you're on mute. He's got a new computer. Uh, yeah. uh, can, you, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, I just want to tell you that Peter won't be coming tonight. His father passed away Monday. Oh, oh. oh I'm sorry to hear that. Okay, so he's in Ohio. All right. Um, Ken. Frank. I'm present. And Teresa. Here. Okay. First up is the approval of the minutes from 127. Anybody have any comments, corrections? And if not, would somebody like to make a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Um, Ken. Oh, Ken. You just lose Ken? Here we lost Ken. We just lost Ken. Uh, Jimmy? Yes. Savannah? Yes. Teresa? Yes. Ken, do you approve yes. the minutes? Okay, yes. I also approve the minutes. Frank, uh, actually, you were not here last meeting, correct? Correct. I'll abstain because I was not present. Okay. Um, all right, so I also approved the minutes. And first up is DP313614. It's 109 Palm Street. And it's a public hearing continued. Uh, notice of intent for construction of an addition in an after the fact filing of an above ground pool within buffer to BVW. Yes. Hi, everyone. Hey, good um, so my name is Julia Hogebohm from LEC for the record. Um, and in the audience is also the homeowners, Jessica and Jonathan Bellia. Um, Hello. Uh, so like you said, this is our second public hearing to discuss our notice of intent application at 109 Farm Street uh, for the construction of a single family dwelling off the rear of a, oh, sorry for the construction of an addition to a single family dwelling um, and for after the fact approval of an above ground swimming pool. Um, so to refresh the commission's memory, there is a jurisdictional stream and an associated BVW that um, occur occurs along the rear property boundary um, and places the 100 foot buffer zone onto the property. And so I don't know how much the commission wants me to go over the public hearing. I know it's been four months. Um, so I will give a little bit of a, a rundown, um, but just stop me if you don't want me to. Um, and is it okay if I go ahead and share the uh, plan that we submitted with our application? Yes, please do. Sure. Okay, so here is the uh, plan that we submitted. Um, you can see the stream occurs along the rear property boundary and uh, the bordering vegetated wetland along that. Um, so the applicant is proposing to construct a 170 foot square, 170 square foot addition off the rear of the house. Um, it'll be elevated above the existing grade and supported by three helical uh, piling posts. Um, those will be installed using a track driven uh, machine to ensure uh, minimal ground disturbance. They're just pretty much drilled straight into the ground. 
um, and no site grading or tree removal is required to uh, construct the addition. Um, and that is located approximately uh, 60 feet away from the uh, BBW within the outer 100 foot buffer zone. Um, there is also an existing above ground pool located in the uh, backyard. And this pool was constructed in 2020. Um, uh, the contractor who installed the pool did receive a um, building permit from the town and the homeowners weren't aware that uh, he also needed to receive oh. a conservation permit. Um, and we did submit that uh, building permit with oh. our application. Yeah. Um, and so as part of that installation, a mulberry tree was also cut um, to prevent berries from falling into the pool. Um, so in order to mitigate the uh, tree removal in the pool installation, we originally proposed uh, three native cultivar shrubs to be planted within an existing landscape bed. Um, but at the last public hearing, the commission encouraged us to uh, provide further uh, mitigation. And so um, we are proposing an additional four native cultivar shrubs along the stream within the BBW and an additional native sapling tree, a cultivar species um, also along the stream. The shrubs will be native sweet pepper bush hummingbird and the tree will be native river birch little king. Uh, the, four uh, the four shrubs and the one sapling uh, exceeds the tree mitigation uh, requirements as outlined in the Wakefield tree removal policy. And so we're hoping that this um, is sufficient additional mitigation uh, for, for the commission. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I'd love to answer any questions that the commission may have. Did, um, did you provide a list of those plantings anywhere? Um, they are provided in the application, but I don't, the additional shrubs are not, I, I haven't, I haven't emailed them to the uh, agent, to okay. Rebecca, but I definitely can. Okay, yeah, please do. Sure. Let me make a note of that. Can I just ask a question, uh, Jim and um, Bob, uh, ne neither um, Elaine nor Rebecca are on tonight, is that right? No, I, I don't see either one of them. Um, Judy, do you know if, I think it would be Elaine. I know she sent some information. Yeah, Elaine is supposed to be here. Okay. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Jimmy, do you know if uh, Elaine is joining us? Oh, you're muted. Can you hear me? Yes. She's trying to, she's, she uh, can't connect up, but she thinks she might be able to get there now. Okay. She's working on it. Thank you. Are there any questions from the commission? No. Well, how did the last meeting end up? Why did we continue? Um, I the commission encouraged us to just provide more, a little bit more uh, mitigation for the tree that was removed. So, and we didn't have a DEP number. That was a big hold right. up on, on coming back. And when was that first um, meeting? Was that November? It was yeah, the end of October. End of October. Uh, I can give you the exact date. 
Kayleen has joined us. October 28th was the uh, first public hearing. All right, uh, there are no questions or comments from the commission. I just want to make sure that um, there's a line. Yeah, that I have a uh, the correct information. I understand there's a, a new plant list that you have that you were going to send to Judy. Have I got that right? You, my apologies, I had trouble getting on this evening. Is oh. is that correct? Yeah, I haven't sent anything over yet, but I I can do that as soon as we get off. Okay, can you do me a favor? Don't send it to Judy. Okay. Send it to uh, Eve Reland at wakefield.us. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Julie, can you just quickly um, recap the plantings for um, Elaine? Yeah. Um, Sure. So uh, originally we proposed the three native cultivar shrubs within the landscape bed. Um, and we are now proposing four additional uh, native cultivar shrubs within the wetland and one native cultivar sapling tree. So the, uh, the shrubs will be native sweet pepper bush, uh, little hummingbird. That's the same that was proposed in the landscape bed. And the sapling tree will be uh, river birch, little king. Oh, I remember this. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, any other uh, questions or comments? If not, would somebody like to make a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor, Frank? Yes. Ken? Yes. Jimmy? Yep. Silvana? Yes. Teresa? Yes. And I also vote to close the public hearing. Julia will send that list of plantings off to Elaine. Uh, which we just re, uh, reviewed. Um, and I guess that's it. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. You too. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Uh, no, um, no special conditions were discussed previously, correct? Correct. No, no, no. I have some special conditions here dating from the 28th of October. Um, let's see. Uh, one was the um, pool was to have a cartridge filter and there was to be no back flushing. Uh, additional plantings, okay, we have those. And then uh, the location of the pool. And I have here uh, that this was an after the fact filing and that the pool has been constructed within the 25 foot no disturb zone. This location is not grandfathered and any new pool location must be located outside that 25 foot no disturb zone. This condition shall remain in perpetuity uh, and shall be noted in the certificate of compliance. There was three conditions, Elaine. Cartridge filled. Yeah. Elaine, you got muted somehow. Mm. Let me send her a message. That ought to be it. <laughs> you, uh, you cut out on us, Elaine. Want to repeat that again? Three conditions okay. or four conditions? We missed that entire thing, Elaine. Sorry. We heard the cartridge filter. <laughs> okay. Cartridge filter. Then there was a condition about the location of the pool. And it reads, uh, this is an after the fact filing. 
and the pool has been constructed within the 25 foot no disturb zone. This location is not grandfathered and any new pool location um, must be located outside the 25 foot disturb zone. That's the idea of that if this pool, if they remove the pool, the new pool, uh, this condition shall remain in perpetuity and shall be noted in the certificate of compliance. Okay, so there's two conditions, two special yeah. conditions. Two special conditions. Okay. Uh, okay, does somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance with those two conditions. I'm sorry, in order of conditions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't want to rush things. Okay, is there a with second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Savannah? Yes. Teresa? Yes. Jimmy? Yes. Ken? Uh, Ken? Ken got muted. Frank? Yes. Uh, Ken? Sorry, I had to drop off for a second. Uh -huh. We're voting on the uh, conditions with the two special conditions. Yes. And I also vote yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. All right. We get 718. We got a few minutes. Um, Elaine, we've got uh, a couple of requests for certificate of compliances. Uh, both of them have been continued to the next meeting. Okay. And the only other business actually is 21 Heritage Lane. Tree okay. removal request. Yes. Is the property owner here this evening? I don't see anybody. No. Okay, I sent you a photograph earlier this evening. It should be in somebody's inbox. Yep. Yeah. All right, if you could take a look at that. He has requested that uh, two trees be removed because they are uh, leaning and they continue to lean more and more every year. And he's concerned that they'll fall onto the property, into the pool, uh, onto the house. So you can see the two trees, one is clearly bent over, it's not that large. And the other one you see in the back coming in as an angle. And uh, that one is also, um, that one's also leaning considerably. Uh, those trees in a resource area, are they definitely jurisdictional? I guess it's my first question. Yes, that's the first question I asked and they are also, yes, they are jurisdictional. Okay. Not familiar with the uh, location. I need to need to look it up. Okay. Even it's hard to tell from this picture where I, mean, I see one tree, but where where the, the other trees. I, again, because you can't see the bottom of the trees, I just don't, I can't tell where the trees are, I guess. What's I think one? one may be missing. One picture may be missing. Could you put the picture of the trees back up and I can explain it to you? Yeah. Hang on, I was just about to put the map up. Actually, it'll 
It's going to take me a moment. I got, I got out of my email. Um, give me a second. Probably grab it. You want me to grab it? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Can you guys see that? Uh, it's coming. There it is. First tree is the very small one that you can see coming right across, like at a 45 degree angle. One up here? Um, right above that little red, whatever it is. Oh, the birdhouse, the oh, branch coming out. That's tree number one. Oh, that's a tree? That, that little thing is a tree, wow. Yeah, yeah. That, so that's one. And the other one, and I'm not sure what happened with the other photograph, but it is the one go, um, if you follow the tree in the front, go all the way to the top and then go off to your right-hand side, you'll see the crown of that tree. And the crown of that tree. Go straight up, Frank. Before yeah, yeah. That one there. And that is the tree, that is the angle rather, that the entire tree sits on. It's a triple trunk tree. The other two trunks go straight up. That one goes at that angle and the property owner tells me that it has been uh, slowly um, moving and, and sliding over the years until it has reached that angle. And that's like a 45 degree angle if you follow it down right and it goes like that all the way to the trunk yeah so what, what, do, you, what do you see now do you, can you see the aerial no Are you still looking at the photo yes yeah oh i don't use zoom enough uh let's see i can uh, i can get the aerial pretty quick i already have oh do you okay yeah yeah it's hard to see that it's hard to see where that fence is in relation to the pool. I'll stop sharing. All right, I can right. share with this now if you'd like. Probably, I'm not sure exactly where, but I'm guessing that might be likely in this area. I think it's uh, go over to the right a bit, closer to the pool. Okay. That's it, in that over vicinity. Here. Yeah, yes. you can see how far the shadow is cast. Yeah. And what is the resource area here? It's a, like a red maple swamp back there. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Any questions or comments, concerns? Are they proposing to compensate it with another smaller tree that won't go as high up, or is it just cutting it down completely with nothing in place? Would be asking them to follow the tree policy. Mm -hmm. Right, the policy says the loss of live trees in a resource area, especially those within 25 feet, the buffer shall be required re replacement. Right. Or a fee paid, right? 
yeah, so there's a combination of, of options. Um, meet the minimum diameter or is there a minimum diameter in the policy? Yeah, yeah six, six feet, inches. Right. Six feet of diameter, you're right. Six inch uh, measured six four foot up from the ground. Yep, four foot from the ground, sorry. Is that first tree, the one with the um, closest one, is that even six inch diameter? I'm not sure. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say, it didn't look like it. Elaine, it probably isn't, right? It's probably just around six. So there's a number of options. Three small shrubs, three foot or greater in height at time of planting. Two large shrubs, five to six feet in height at greater time of planting. Uh, one evergreen tree, five or six feet in height. One deciduous shade tree, two and a half inches or greater in diameter, measured four feet from the ground. Um, the homeowner isn't here, so we don't know what they're willing yeah. to Yeah, so we just want them to follow the um, policy. We typically follow up. Is there any follow up? I'll follow up. Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, any further discussion on that? Questions, comments? If not, so we'll grant the request and uh, Elaine, you'll follow up to. Um, Ensure they are aware of the policy and um, choose, you know, one of the options. Okay. All right. All right. We still have a couple minutes left. Just mention something. Yes. Um, Rebecca and I have talked about taking on the open space plan. Okay. So um, we want to have a hearing. They have an advisory group for the Vision 2030 plan that they have in place. They don't meet until April. So we thought it would be a good idea to have a meeting in March with just the commission to figure out what you're going to be looking for and Rebecca has some things to put pulled together and then meet with the other group. In addition to we thought we'd invite environmental sustainability as well. Is that enough time because our next uh, let's see we have one more meeting this month right and then we're into March. Right it would have to be a separate meeting outside of the commission meeting. Okay. And I just wanted to mention another thing in the Vision 2030 document. I don't know if anyone's looked at it. Um, there's a link that MAPC has to trail maps in Wakefield. And one of them is in the Crystal Lake watershed, which we discussed before. Right. I had talked to Paul Revis about this in 2019 when they came out with the draft. And he had reached out to the person from MAPC who came up with the draft to take that off the map and that didn't happen. So I I talked to Rebecca about it and I mean I'll probably follow up myself with um, town council and whoever else is putting this together and MAPC but she was going to as well I think to try to get it taken off the trail map. Okay what does it take to have that removed? I don't know, it never should have been put on to begin with and they were told not to, put, to take it off from the draft and then lo and behold, there it is. I mean, this was right around the time that the abutter cut down the trees, right. remember that whole hearing? Yeah. I mean, part of that hearing were the pictures of the signs saying no trespassing. So I, I don't know, I was disturbed by that, that that was included as a trail. All right, so you're going to follow up with that? Yes. Okay. All right, uh, we have 7.30. Uh, we can move on. DEP 313-613. This is to Clyde Court. Public hearing 
continued public hearing, notice of intent for the construction of a single family dwelling in Buffer to BVW. And Paul, I see you're here. Yep. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I did submit a, um, a drawing in. Um, I'm not sure if I sent it to Rebecca and she, I think, please sent it off to everyone. Yep, yeah, we have it. A copy of it. Um, basically, based upon that, we had that site visit a few weeks ago out there on Clyde Court, and I sort of updated the plan. I picked up the, uh, the ditch to show it on the plan and a few more spark grades. And also I picked up that um, roughly a 10 inch tree that was out there, uh, which is just off to the, to the rear of the deck on the right hand side of the deck if you're looking from the rear property line. So I don't know if you want me to share the drawing or- Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. This one, let me share it. Uh, All right, so basically um, we had talked out in the field, basically the house is sitting almost right on the 25 foot uh, setback from the BBW, um, which is basically right where the uh, number 47 is on the back of the house. And so I was discussing maybe having a green space area behind the house. Um, and I put a, a, a distance of roughly eight feet just for, so we could talk about it and see what the board thinks. So it allows for a movement behind the house. So the, is the eight feet shown on this? No, but yes. Yeah, the that, purple is a the purple is the house. The blue line where it says eight feet. Yeah. That runs across almost to the corner of the house. Oh, that's I'm sorry. I, I I'm sorry. Yeah. Looks like an addition. Yeah, yeah it looks like an addition. I, I was confused. Like what no, is no, no, it's, I'm just trying to get different colors just to show when it's a little bit easier. And how did you pick eight feet as opposed to 10 feet? I don't want to push my luck. <laughs> with the homeowner or with us? With the board. <laughs> I don't see the difference between picking up two more feet. No, no, feet. that's not. That's good. <laughs> so um, basically, I was looking at coming eight feet off the house, and I was holding a distance of about um, five feet off the corner of the house. Right where it's at this, where it says 6.5, right there by the corner of the deck, so that gives access underneath the deck. They can walk and behind the house and come back up the other side. And then I was just doing um, some plantings. I gave a list of some plantings. I can work with uh, the board or the um, landscape architect on plantings. Most of those are all shrubs. What I like to have, you know, we talked about possibility of a fence running around there. I was thinking more or less on, on bushes that could spread out as more of a buffer than putting in um, a chain link fence. But either but way, the, the owner doesn't can't have to walk through, though. I mean, it has to be bushes that you can't walk through, right? I mean, well, they, they'll be wide. They'll be different species. We get them high, get them wide, they're three to five feet. We can space them out that way so they don't walk through. I mean, the owner doesn't care if it's one way or the other. He puts up a fence, he puts up a fence. Yeah, I would almost recommend it like a split rail fence and the plantings behind yeah. it to so it's very clear, you know, as those plantings grow and, and spread out, you know, okay. there's a reason that they're there. That's fine. I mean, I can put that split rail fence in. Well, how much area is in that eight foot rectangle there? Uh, well, with that, it's within the 25 feet, it's around. Um, 230 feet, 240 feet. So that's that's in the no disturb zone in that circle, correct? Yes. Yep. Can can we take that same number of square feet and in you know, I mean it's not a true replication, but can we can we make that circle sort of like an like flatten it, make it oval and have it come out more and continue those plantings to the right of the plan there down to you know almost where that stone swale is. Yeah, I mean, I could take that area, run it both um, possibly left and right. I mean, a little tough on the left-hand side, but the right-hand side's a lot easier just because of the grade. We could probably do some plantings on either side of the stone swale. 
I, I think that's what we talked about when we were out at this fight that time. Yes. Yeah. Because I, I with the um, with this, like that 190 uh, spot grade, which is near those two little stumps, that's sort of like a high point. There's nothing really growing in there. So if we can pull that grade down just a touch, that will get me closer to what's um, out there. We can put the plantings in, put some plantings probably close towards the um, stone swale on either side. Paul, I'm just more worried about what the what's going to happen to the ground behind there in that 25 foot note disturb. We're actually, I mean, it looked kind of rough out there. There was water, there was a stream, there was, you know, how are we going to protect the BVW? Um, I won't be changing and, the gray. We'll just be putting in plantings. So you're going to have that. Water going right up to the foundation of the house. Well, oh, that'll be that'll be great off because that'll, that'll probably match it after one um, between one eighty nine and one ninety contour. Right in there, so that, I'll fill in that that eight foot section. Hmm. I didn't do any final grading yet because I want to see first where we can, where I'm heading. But that would be my intent: is to carry probably get it close to that grade. And then just throwing oh. that ditch at that point. How close are those? Uh, are those just the locations you want to put the plants in the green? Not, not necessarily. I'll probably work with the um, landscape architect on those. Because I would think that it would be better off to get something closer to the BVW because those trees were cut down because they fell down, right? Yeah, they came over in the um, one of the storms. So there is no, we've already lost canopy in that area. I don't mm -hmm. know if you can put something in that area. Yeah, I mean, we could look at this on a different type of tree to put it in there, or a couple of trees. Well, what are you proposing for a barrier? I assume that's just um, erosion and sedimentation controls shown there. What, what yes. are we leaving along that eight foot strip for protection? Yeah, I mean, I'll probably use the same thing the silt sock you're looking for is the silt sock and the silt fence. I mean, as far as the final product, is it going to be a, a, a chain link fence? Oh, we, oh, we just said a, we just talked split rail. Yeah, fence. yeah, it's just a split rail in front of the plantings. So the basement's at 190. 190. Yep. And the streams at 189. Well, that's no, that's not the stream. That's the top of the bank. Oh, okay. I'm guessing there's going to be a, a sump in the in the basement, right? Well, I'm actually above the high water table, so. Wow. Which is, yeah. Well, where's the property line for that lot? Is it? Um, it's right at the, um, almost at the, see where the B2 flag is? Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Where does it go to the left? If you go there's, left. There's the yeah. property line right along yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, to the left. Yeah, it runs all the way over to where that existing uh, tree is with the 195 seven grade is another five, 10 feet past that. Okay, so you wanna reduce our no disturbs uh, distance from 25 to eight feet. 17. 17 feet. Roughly, yep. I know it's too late now, but before those other two houses were built, I wonder if this house could have been shifted more to the left. Uh, it didn't have the room. Uh, we needed the frontage on the cul-de-sac. Oh. And Paul, why is that deck, uh, why, why does it have an angle on the side of the no disturb zone? Uh, that be straightened out? If it was squared off, then it would fall within the 25 foot. So he came in at an angle to keep it outside. Well, I think you could still square it off, right? If I squared it off, I'd be inside the 25 foot. Do not disturb. No, square it off. no, no, no the other way. To the left. To the left. So take take the top of the stairs, take the landing, and, and follow that straight back to the house. Right. 
Oh, oh, the set of stairs and just take it off the other side. Yeah. I mean, I could rotate the stairs to the other side of the back of the house. No, no, no. You, instead <laughs> of having the side go like this, have the side go straight back. Um, not following. Sorry. The right hand side of the deck is to is is a, is a is a slant, right? Instead of being a trapezoid, right. make, make it a it, rectangle. Make, yeah, make it go straight back. Oh, okay. All right, I see what you're saying. Let's call it straight back and just square right. it. Right. You're decreasing the size of the deck. Yes. Because right now, now inside the 25 foot. Right. right. But it, 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 we're we're going to take back some of that no disturb zone. That's what I'm getting at. We we we're gonna like I said we're gonna compress that circle. And just make the no disturb zone wider, so it'll ultimately be the same area. Okay, I mean, I can take that and swing it to the, uh, take it and swing it to the, to the right, the yep. street. I'll take that side instead of. I mean, I'll square the deck off, um, but I, I'll just take the area more to the, going towards the right of the pro, of the property towards um, Prospect Street. Okay. Yeah. Again, figure out what the area lost is and and just replace it in kind. I okay. That would be fine. All right. I'll work on that. And then, um, do you want to say that the plant that that the trees are planted? In, I mean, we have to approve the location of it, um, and maybe Elaine or Rebecca can check that out. That's fine. I mean, what I'll do is I'll work on a landscaping plan with the architect. I can get that in, go over it with uh, Rebecca and Elaine beforehand on the type, the species, the location. Because these are all what I show is bushes, but if we want to, to try and replace those two trees that were down, maybe we'll put in some um, couple of trees in there. Just as not much of a canopy. The only real tree out there is that 10 inch one by the deck. And Jimmy, are you okay with the split rail? I know you had some apprehensions about a split rail. Well, I, I just don't think they last that long. They don't, but that would give a chance for the, um, if we have a shrub, layer going across to grow and fill in. Can we use like a thorny shrub to you know, just <laughs> kind of, uh, no, I'm serious. I, I see that <laughs> Maybe some hand grenades and landmines. Right, right. We, we want a, a, a really good deterrent. <laughs> I mean, it does look like an easy pass through. I don't know why you'd be passing through, but. Um, but, you know, homeowners like to you know, expand their usable space. And yes, I think we need like a double deterrent here between the fence and the shrub layer. You know, we could also look for something more mature to be planted against, you know, that row. Mm -hmm. I would, I would tend to bring the plants closer to the BBW because number one, the house is going to shade it all. I don't, I don't know which side, which side is this is south. South is. I mean, I guess I wouldn't worry so much about up close to the. I'd be more interested in protecting the BBW. South is to the right, isn't it, Paul? Yes. And like you guys said, I think Elaine would be, uh, Rebecca would be good at, at uh, figuring out what would be um, good plants for that area. I, I think we need something that might be substantial to get a canopy started because you've already lost both trees that were there. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, you looking for something more substantial than a split rail, like a stockade or something? or? I'm, not, I'm talking about the plants. That's right, but plants. also you had mentioned something about the fence. So no, I mean, I, my, only, my only objection to the split rail is that they don't last long. They don't. You know, I yeah, don't care. Cedar. Because, yeah, I mean, the cedar ones last longer, but yeah. I'm more concerned that we're, we're not holding our 25 foot no disturb, but. But I also um, want to make sure there is a clear boundary that's going to be respected. Yeah. Well, could we, I mean, could we, I mean, if I show a perimeter plan type of thing, could we use it as like a uh, conservation restriction? Put that in the deed. Uh, you have something like that. Yeah, um, Elaine, what's your thoughts about that? 
Yeah, that's certainly possible and, and a good idea. So what are you going to say that within what area are you not going to? I'm sorry, Paul, just flesh that out a little bit. What, what do you think? Well, if I'm saying if I have where well, we have the perimeter now, we're pulling it down. I mean, I can show a plan. It's basically 25 feet right now in the beginning part down along the um, rear property line. We carry that up towards the that eight foot area for grading. And then we can just put that on the plan because I'll have it widened out. And then we just demark that on the plan. I mean, we could probably even put in some um, like little metal posts with a, a note saying, no, a little decal on it, like Saugus and Reading does that says a wetlands restriction area. Yeah, I like that. Granite pound or something. They, well, they, um, Saugus uses a metal post. Um, so I, um, Reading uses um, small granite posts and they have a decal that says oh, the Reading um, wetlands. <coughs> so I can have something like that and show it and maybe we can put something like that in the ground. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, and the, and the deed restriction would be no, nothing I mean, no planting other than what's there now or replacements can be done and nothing else can be done in that area. That's what you're suggesting? Yeah, I mean, it's just a restriction for going into an, I mean, if they go in there and they start cutting stuff down and push the grass out to the property line, then there's a restriction on that and it's in the deed. Who's going to enforce that? Well, the commission has jurisdiction over it. Well, so when you're done, you're still going to have that gully that goes well, up to gully the will still be there but it won't be there next to the house it won't be okay right because he's gonna he's gonna fill all that in i'll fill in that eight foot section between the house and uh the shrubbery and leave the rest open we hate mm -hmm. to hear that <laughs> stabilize that uh, do you get a lot of flow through there Pro probably not right it's just runoff that it's, just, it's groundwater right now it's just sitting there at that elevation if you if that was filled in you wouldn't see it it's just the high groundwater table in that area. Hmm. And how, how are you going to terminate it? Just just leave it. Just the way, basically, all this way it sits right now. It just comes up and stops. Just comes up to the next elevation. So yeah, I bet there's not a house. Thing. There's not a house there now. Is it? Is that going to be fine with the house sitting a few feet away? Eight feet away. Yeah. Paul, did you find out anything about the liner that we saw? Yeah, that, that's it's just on the side. That's on the side bank, so that allows for, it's, there's nothing underneath it. It's something on the side bank, so it doesn't, water doesn't flow through, so to say, so as the water builds up. Was that part of the detail? Yes. It was in the detail? Yes, it's in the detail. Okay. Okay. What's the black lines? Hay bales? Yeah, those are the uh, the silt fence and the um, silt fence. Silt well, mm -hmm. it's actually the hay bales right now is what's out there. Can I just ask, you haven't come back for a certificate of compliance for the other filing. How come? Um, I don't know. I'd have to, the homeowner's away right now, so we'll probably file in the spring. So basically, you'd be able to see what's out there with the rain garden and everything else and the plantings. Is there people living in the homes? Yes, I, I, I don't know how they got financing with that outstanding order. That, that's what I'm curious. Hmm. Yeah, there, there's at least one, one family living in one house there. I think the house on the right. Yes. Okay, is there anything else? Um, Paul, can you scroll that picture down so I can see the top property line? The other way, go the other way. Yeah, right there. Yeah. So you were at the minimum that you could go with yeah. that house? Yeah, the minimum setback is 20. I'm at 21. Yeah. And, and 16 on the side. Instead of going to the Board of Appeal, imagine that.
What's the size of the house again? I'm sorry if I missed it. It's, uh, overall, it's 68 feet. By, the garage side is 23 and a half. And there's no way to elongate it as opposed to. All right, well, I can't, I'm at the minimum setback on the, the left side, and I have the detention area on the right, and I can't shrink it because I need a garage to get a car in. You start to get smaller than that, it's you're not going to fit much into the garage. Mm. All right. All right, so we'd be looking for a planting plan. Um, extend the planting area to the to the right. Square off the deck. Show a fence. Um, maybe locate a couple of granite posts. Mm -hmm. Where this is, was there anything else? Paul, do you have the, the original plan with you? Uh, not on this. No, I don't. No. All right. Elaine, do you have any comment? I, I, have, you see, have you seen the site, Elaine? Yes, I've been on the site. No, I don't have any more comments other than what you've already discussed. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, Paul, you have those requests? Yes. Okay. All right. So, we'll continue to um, the next meeting. And you'll have a revised plan available? You think? Yes. I'll submit Two that. weeks? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. All right, we do have a few minutes uh, before eight o'clock. Elaine, do you have anything else to cover? Old business, new business? Actually, I do not. I do not. Judy, do you have any additional business? Yeah, just back to the open space plan. Um, North Reading recently opened, uh, updated their open space plan. So that could be something to reference. But if you want to come up with some ideas, look at the current open space plan, see what you like, what you don't like. So we have a starting point to work from for the meeting. Have you taken a look at the North Reading plan? Yes, yes. So Judy, are you talking about modifying the whole thing at this point? It, well, I think it, yeah, it needs to be changed, updated. Reworked. Okay. Anything else, Judy? No. Nope. Oh, tomorrow's the last day to um, submit applications for anyone who wants to be on the board. Judy, who is up again? Frank and Silvana. Okay. <coughs> Elaine did send a few uh, emails out. Um, earlier this evening. Don't know if anybody's had a chance to see uh, all of them or not, but um, you know, check your email. Uh, 
Jimmy, how's your new computer working? Doing fine. Have it all mastered? What? Have it all mastered? No. I'll figure it out. Really. Not really. Just don't do anything harsh. <laughs> <laughs> Might not recover. The laptop, right? Yeah. It's fast. The colors are exuberant. Yeah. <laughs> you're in high definition. Jim. Yeah, you're in high definition. 4D. I, I do have high definition. You can't you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys are looking pretty sharp in this. <laughs> <laughs> what were we looking like before? <laughs> Murray. <laughs> uh, well, what are we waiting for? No, well, it's seven fifty-eight. We can't go for eight. Oh. I'll just take the quiet moment to say hello to everyone. Oh, Matt Byrne yeah. with BSC oh, Group. Yeah. Good to see you all. You're looking pretty sharp too. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I should get me a new computer. <laughs> Where's your background? Is that your backyard? Yeah, if, if only. <laughs> nice little vernal pool up in Georgetown. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say. I'm in Malden. My backyard doesn't look quite so nice. <laughs> oh, OK. It must be time to start now. One more minute. If it helps, the only person representing the applicant is here tonight. Yeah, Jimmy, you have to learn how to set the time in that computer. Yeah. <laughs> I got it down to the second here. <laughs> I can see. Oh, yeah, you're right. A little bit longer. We've never been this precise before. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Eight o'clock. Okay. B D uh, being eight o'clock, we have DEP 313608, which is 200 to 400 Quarter Power Parkway. Uh, continued public hearing, notice of intent, construction of the multi story building. With buffer to BVW in the bank, bordering land subject to flooding and riverfront. Um, okay. Take it away. For the rep record, uh, Matt D'Amico representing the applicant, CCF Quantipa Property Company LLC. Uh, apologies, we couldn't put in this request earlier, but respectfully, respectfully, we'd request that our public hearing be continued to the next regularly scheduled uh, meeting on February 24th. Um, in further reviewing the peer review issued for this DEP file, um, you know, we'd like to use the time between today and the next scheduled hearing to coordinate with the peer reviewer and the town engineer and work towards providing a project solution that addresses the peer review in its totality uh, to the extent of the regulations. Uh, in particular, there's some clearly some disagreement regarding the design of our stormwater management systems for the project. Um, and we'd like to take the chance to review those with the peer reviewer uh, in coordination with the town engineer who endorsed the design. I, I don't necessarily think, you know, our presentation tonight is is productive on our part at this point. Okay. Um, so who, who's the peer reviewer? That's I. Our peer reviewer. Okay. So are you going to peer review the, uh, the, um, the drainage system? So we would want someone to look at that. Yeah, Matt, is that what you were? No, I, so I, I believe the, the peer review on the, on the stormwater management was 
Um, you know, I, I believe that was granted to the town engineer. I just think there's some issues in terms of, in terms of, for instance, with Quantipau Parkway, and there's other parties that are involved in that, such as the town, um, that aren't solely our jurisdiction. Um, and I, I think we just like to be able to have the chance to kind of coordinate some of that between between the peer reviewer, because a lot of your comments address the stormwater management for the project. So I, I think it, it makes sense to kind of try to match those two parties up um, so we can address that productively before our next meeting and hopefully provide updates to the plan that um, you know can create lesser disruption um, uh, in the border areas and also you know, hopefully a better design in general. So kind of says, can you look at stormwater management without looking at dra the drainage? Uh, who are you talking to? I'm asking, uh, Matt. Huh? Matt? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Matt Boone. Sorry, not Matt D'Amico. Yeah. Um, so, I both. yeah. So, the issue, the issue that I have um, and have put on the table that does need to get addressed is the use of buffer zone for stormwater management features. Um, and, and that's a problem just because it expands the footprint of the project beyond what exists today, um, which isn't great, um, but it further diminishes any available buffer zone that is there. So that's something that, you know, it was the new, the revised plans that came out uh, Tuesday, that we received Tuesday, um, showed the removal of the, um, uh, the, yeah, words escaping me. Um, the wet, wet, basin. wet basin. To, yeah. yeah, they remove those, which is good. You know that reduces mm -hmm. the proposed impact in buffer zone to BVW. Um, but there's a whole bunch of um, sediment four bays that remain. Yeah, within the buffer zone, which isn't great. Um, so that's something that uh, I think that uh, I've had discussion with. Um, Scott Goddard, not in depth, but um, you know, expressed that concern that use of the buffer zone for stormwater management that is required uh, to do a project of this scale um, is kind of double dipping in a sense. Um, you're not actually improving the protection of the adjacent resource by building stormwater management in that in that buffer zone. So that's something that needs to get sorted out. Um, I, you know, I wouldn't be looking at the stormwater management system. And I think what Matt D'Amico is suggesting is that the applicant, the town engineer, um, and myself, and hopefully uh, a representative of the commission, uh, Rebecca or Elaine, whomever uh, would be appropriate. Uh, sit down and, and have some of those conversations. Uh, yep, that, that's exactly what I'm suggesting. Okay. And the idea would be to move the stormwater management outside of the buffer zone. Is what Matt, Bird, if you had your druthers, that's what you would like. That's what I'd be pushing for. I understand the the um, the stated position that the applicant has made. Um, you know, and I, I think that the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, I, I, I don't agree with Scott's interpretation of things. Um, you know, it, it, you put, you put two people in a room that, that know the regulations well, and you'll get four different approaches to, to a, a problem, you know, so there's, there's definitely room for discussion here. Um, but, but that's an issue. It's a, it's a sticking point and, uh, one that needs to get resolved. And, um, you know, I'm certainly willing to, to sit on a meeting to to try to move the ball forward uh, mm -hmm. on on that one, if you if you it really it's at your at your discretion, but I'm certainly willing to do that on your behalf with you. Yep, sounds like a good idea to me. It, it does. It sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Um, I had a conversation earlier this week with Rebecca. I'd be happy to reach out to her and and um, you know. Uh, sort of coordinate with her and the applicant to try to make this happen. Is this going to be in a Zoom meeting that you're going to do this? I would like to be involved in this. 
we I'm could do able. whatever uh we'd be amenable to whatever the commission would want we could do zoom we'd be happy to go on site as well whatever the commission would would desire okay. I, i'll leave that entirely up to you i'd be happy to do anything it would be good to get on site um but on a zoom would be would be fine um okay do you want to um what do you want to do to move it forward yeah do you want to um put something in writing an email invitation to to this and then i'd be, I'd be happy to do that great and then rebecca can look at it share it with the commission get buy-in and uh we can put something on the calendar okay well it sounds like matt domingo is asking for our preference whether it would be so to be fair to him, we need to say what our, I mean, I guess we can think about what our preference is. As to the type of meeting, that's all, Tim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we do need to be, I guess, careful of open meeting law. Right, and exactly. Quorums and, and all that too, you know, be cognizant of that. If I could offer a suggestion, it, I, I, no place to tell you uh, the commission how to do their business, but it, it may it may make sense to have an initial meeting with the peer reviewer, the town engineer, and a representative of um, the commission, so as to not be violating the open meeting law. Um, and if there's you know a further desire for an on-site meeting following that, it might make sense to do something like that. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Makes sense. Matt, just for your, you know, so so this doesn't come out of the blue, we'd have to adjust the scope of the agreement with the town for for this, but I'm sure we can come up with more than happy to accommodate that. Okay. All right. While we do have us all here, there was a question that uh, Dennis Clarity had submitted, and I don't know that we can necessarily have it answered here right yeah. now, but um, I guess I can share my screen to show what the question is and we could submit it. Bear with me. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes. Uh, all right, so Dennis Clarity of One Harvest Road, Wakefield wants to know what provisions the applicant has made to accommodate the traditional drainage that has flowed from the Wakefield Reading Fairground subdivision uh, to Lake Quanapowit. Um, I don't know that something that can be answered, it, it, it's off the property here i believe this i don't know that there's any part of that that's on a property but uh let's see is there another question that we field background subdivision da, 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 da. so it looks like that's the only question um i guess both mats do you have a copy of this and if not, we can get it to you. Uh, having you a copy of that would be would be great. I don't yet have that. Okay, we'll make sure you get a copy. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, is there anything else uh, regarding this before we uh, move on? Uh, Dennis, you have a question. Uh, yes, if, if I could make a suggestion, I, I think there's a very easy solution to this problem. Uh, we, we've been here for uh, about 95 years, and we've gone through a lot of changes. And I, I also served on the uh, Corner Power Study Committee, and uh, I, I learned an awful lot about the lake and how the, how the waters run and the drainage runs. And there's a I believe there's a very simple solution to all our problems that would make 
everything better for everyone. And if if I could just take a minute of your time, I know that your time is precious and that you're missing the Winter Olympics. And I'll be very brief as I can. If, if I could just make a suggestion to you. Sure, go ahead. Um, you know, I was down at the uh, site the other day and um, and I think I know how to share the screen, but I think I'm getting a little better at this. Uh, I probably, uh, can you can you see that? No, no. no. Uh, there's a share, okay. Uh, share. Uh, so select the image that you want to share. <laughs> okay, I selected the image I want to share. And, and do share screen. Okay, and click share screen. Yes. I, I did, it says mail, messages, airdrop, share file. Okay, I guess I click that one. Uh, no, well, this, I did it yesterday. So uh, it worked. Is, is that? Oh, there it is. Yes. You got it, Dennis. Okay. Whoa. We're going to send Jimmy over to help you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, um, I was down at the file, uh, down at the site yesterday, and uh, I I noticed that Quantum Power Parkway is like completely underwater. You can see that? Yes. And, uh, but there's a, uh, uh, there is a easy solution to this. If if you um, oh god, um, if what happens is now this is what this is looking off my back porch. Can you see that? No. no we're still seeing Corner Power Parkway with oh, the car oh. going through where the swale is into the um, PVW. Uh, uh, share. The, the, you have to choose the new image you'd like to share. Oh, I had to get rid of the old one. We'll just uh, click on the the new one. Can you see the new one? No. Oh. Uh, uh, We're all ready to have you uh, teach Jimmy. New, yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. Can He's you doing see, better than me. Can can you uh, can you see that one? No, you're still showing the original image you selected. So oh, I have click, on, click on the other I, image. I had to click on the other image. And yes. well, why don't you run over and help him? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, well, anyways, I'll try to tell you verbally. Um, the pictures are good if you can get them up. Very good resolution picture that we are seeing. <laughs> Thank you. A new share. Uh, does that come up? No. I had to. Close the other one. Uh, okay, well, anyways. Uh, uh, cancel. Close. Uh, well, anyways, what, what happens is um, I live on the other side of the highway. Under the, when they built uh, 128, they put a pipe under the highway that goes into a culvert. When that culvert comes out, it, it used to go into a uh, still existing culvert. It's on the other side of that culvert, but that culvert is blocked. Now, if that drainage could be reconnected, then all that water it's coming from this side of the highway, we, we go directly into the wetlands and then go under the bridge into uh, Lake Quantapala. It, it wouldn't go down into the uh, parking lot and uh, onto Quantapala Parkway. But right now what's happening is that water is, is going down along 95 and it's into the old Ash River 
uh, it's called uh, Walker's Brook now. And because people have been pushing uh, snow into the, uh, off the bridge, it's built up a huge pile and water no longer drains under that bridge. So if you, you just clear that COVID out, that might solve your problem. Uh, so you can either connect, reconnect the COVID so it flows directly into uh, Lake Quanta Pilot, which would be the ideal solution because you wouldn't have to rely upon that mass, uh, mass, uh, mass Department of Transportation to clean the COVIDs along 95 along 95 and but the problem with that is that if you clean the COVID under Quantum Power Parkway what would happen is because there's a dam at uh, on Lowell Street that's too high the water would just flow into the Redden drainage canal so you'd have to remove the dam on Lowell Street and lower the dam for the water to not flow into the red and drainage canal. Um, I can explain this a lot better with pictures if I, if I if if somebody would teach me how to use this machine. Uh, and this is it's, this is a really simple solution to a very complex problem, and it, I think if everyone would be much happier uh, if, if we could affect this. Um, right now, water from this development, the Wakefield Reading uh, Fairgrounds development, I mean, the whole neighborhood is dependent upon that water reaching uh, either the Reading Drainage Canal, which it does now, or reaching Lake Quantipollet. I mean, if that would be devastating, for this neighborhood, it would get totally flooded if that water can't make it under the highway. So, so, so Dennis, you're saying a couple things. There's a blocked culvert and there's a dam, right? Those are the two points that you're um, uh, Yeah, there's a blocked culvert uh, where the Ash River, used, um, which we call now uh, Walker's Brook. And is that in Redding or in Wakefield, the blocked culvert? The block culvert is in Wakefield. Okay. I, I was in contact with the Mass Department of Transportation. Okay. And they, they have a 50 foot drainage easement from the highway to Quantipal Parkway. Oh. Now they're claiming that it's Wakefield's job to clean out that culvert. But, uh, and they kind of wash their hands of it. But when they built the Reading Drainage Canal, the legislature gave permission to the town of Reading to come into Wakefield and clean the culverts. As a matter of fact, they said, shall clean the culverts, shall keep that drainage clear. But if they clean the culvert because of the dam on Lowell Street, that water would flow right into the Reading Drainage Canal. So you have to lower the dam, lower the level of the dam on Lowell Street. Uh, this would probably make, it's probably not making a whole lot of sense to you. Yeah, but, you need to see some, um, some yeah, pictures. Yeah, you need to see pictures and I have these pictures and they're right, right here on my computer. Yeah. Elaine, I just Elaine, do you, Elaine, do you know which culvert he's talking about? Yeah, yeah. Talking about two, two things I'd like to say. One is, um, the, the pictures that he wants to show you this evening are the same pictures that I, that I have paper copies of. So okay. I can scan and send those pictures out so everybody can get Dennis's packet as of tomorrow. Okay. So you'll see them even though they can't turn up on the screen this evening. That would Thanks. be wonderful because it's like yeah. 40 pages long that, that the the, well, the one, hold on a minute, Dennis. The one I have, let's just make sure we're all on the same okay. page. The one I have starts with, hold on, I'm 
going through. Yeah, okay, so I have one here that starts out dated 2-6-2022, written questions to the chair, et cetera. And it is one, two, three, four, it's about a dozen pages. Oh, no, no, that's, that's not the right. I, I sent it on about uh, December, December 18th or so. Oh, that one, that yes, one. It, yes, it's about 40 and pages I, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Dennis, because I have sent that, I sent a copy of that out and you also sent me an electronic copy as I recall? Probably did, yes. Yes, okay. I sent an email out to, uh, hold on one second. Let me just go through some more papers here. I sent an email of that out to everybody on the email list, which included Brian McGrail and included um, the design team to uh, for the project on January 6th. And then I never got a response back. And the question I asked was, here it is. I sent it out on January 26th, Mitch Goddard, Mike D'Amico, Brian McGrail, Scott Goddard, Tim Williams. And I sent it out on January 26th and said, could you please forward the requested information from me if you believe such information was not required to be applied or to be filed for, please state the reason why these laws do not apply. I did not hear back. And then I sent a second email out on January 14th um, requesting the same information. And I have not yet heard back from anybody on that email list. Uh -huh. So. It is in their possession, and I'm still awaiting a reply. Oh, if if, if the committee, I, I, I mean, I, I made it like mostly pitches, so it's very easy. I mean, it's very little wordage, and it's mostly pitches, and it tells a story. And if if you could read that, uh, can can you see that uh, view from my back back porch? Yeah, we see the stream. We see ninety five. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I have, I mean, there's an intermittent stream that flows down to that pipe. I mean, that, the intermittent stream doesn't have to go that way, uh, but it does have to go to into the pipe. Um, I wish I could, it's so frustrating not to be able to show you pictures to oh. explain this to you. Uh, and Dennis, how would it benefit you if you stopped by the office and saw Rebecca or Elaine? I, I, I mailed him the uh, the forty page. But I mean, actually went to see visit the office and walked through it. Uh, well, I, I would like to. Um, uh, actually, I'd like to go out and take a look at the land with Dennis. That's good. Yeah, that would be it. ideal. Yeah, it, it makes more sense. As and much was, as this paperwork is helpful, nothing is and like- If Matt wants paperwork. to come along too, uh, that would be even better. Uh, if, if he's, so I can show him what I'm talking about. Elaine, would you mind letting me know what email address that was sent from? I'm, I'm going through my email right now and I'm not seeing anything here. I'm not seeing it. Okay, I sent it to, Hold on. M D'Amico at ccfne.com. That's me. I, I, I just am not seeing it for whatever reason. I'll, I'll ask some folks from my team if they if they received it. I don't I don't know. If, I assume there were attachments. Maybe the I don't know if there was there attachments. Were no attachments I but I didn't get a bounce back. I will send it again. Okay. I'll I'll um, let you know if I I don't end up getting it. I'll shoot you an email. And okay. I think it, it would be good if it, I mean, it's, it's, it, I mean, it's 40 pages long, but it would only take you five minutes to glance through it. It's really, uh, it's pictures tell the story. And uh, it, I think if the committee could, uh, I have copies that I can mail to the committee. If that's, if, I don't know if that's acceptable. 
Uh, Dennis, are you saying that your property still gets flooded? Um, no, my property is only about two feet above the lake, the level of the lake. Okay. And I, so, it, I, it, I mean, it's flat as a pancake here. And there's, there's about a two foot drop. And, and if what my concern is that, is if that flow from the pipe is ever stopped, I mean, it would be a disaster. But yeah. are you saying that's already clogged? No, no. It's a it's, different, it's a different pipe or culvert that's clogged. Uh, well, that first picture I showed you, that's yeah. a retention pond because the red and drainage canal cannot handle all that flow. So the the property, what, what it does is that it has retention. There's one retention pond that you saw and there's another retention pond you didn't see. And we, that's where the water stores while it waits for the rain drainage canal to go down. Well, we've if, only seen two pictures. We saw the picture of Corner Park Parkway, you know, with the water in it, and we've seen the picture of your backyard. Oh, and you it, saw that? We're looking at the backyard right now, but prior oh. to that, we saw the Corner Power picture okay. um, with wow. the water in the in Corner Power Parkway. But that's it. I don't think we saw anything that's a, a retention bond. Okay. Um, Let's see. Uh, this uh, th this is the uh, Corner Power Parkway is the retention pond. Okay. Um, um, I don't know if it's possible, but it would be nice to contact Mike Collins and ask him about this because I think um, we will, me and Dennis were both on that committee. It's, as was Mike Collins. And it didn't, I thought the final outcome was that the, the, the grading wasn't right to do what Dennis is talking about. That well, that's what, well. So I, I, I can't, I don't want to speak for him because I don't, you know, I don't know all the details, but if Mike Collins was to come in, I don't know if you, if you can contact him and ask him for his opinion on it. I mean, he spent a lot of, lot of time working on yeah. this. Isn't, isn't Mike retired in Florida or something? He has a house down for He's not. He's not. He's in Massachusetts. He's in Wakefield, I believe. Yeah, Mike Collins and I all uh, didn't always uh, agree about everything. Well, Dennis, you voted negative on everything that ever came up. <laughs> uh, but but I was right, told you, oh. and uh, uh, if we could. Uh, so how about this? So Elaine is gonna wants to meet you, Dennis, and look at exactly what you're describing in person. So can Elaine, you, can you make arrangements? Yes, Dennis, may I have your telephone number, please? Fridays uh, yeah. tend to be my site visit days, and tomorrow's Friday. So um 339. 339. 293. 293. 3030. 3030. 30. All right. I would like to add uh, just briefly that we had a filing on Payon Boulevard uh, last year, the year before, and they uh, there was a proposal to take an undeveloped piece of land uh, by a man by the name of Frumani and to develop it. That might trigger some memories. And yeah. part of that whole discussion involved the fact that if the if the dam at the head of Lake Kwanapawit is not strictly controlled at a certain elevation, those people flood out. Right. So if you make the water too low in Kwanapawit, you flood out the whole area at Payon Boulevard. But, so uh, but, but, you have to think what happens to that water okay. once it gets to the other side of Kwanapawit. I it understand what you're saying, Elaine, but there's, no, there's not one drop of difference between the water going through the Reading drainage canal to pay on Boulevard and the water going into Lake Quantipau. There's not one single drop of difference. Mm, I mean, what, what I'm hearing from the engineering department and from DPW is if you lower the elevation of Lake Quantipau, uh, then, it, or, or you lower it too fast, 
pay on bills you lower your tax, cut it out. Right. That, that's the difference. But I, I can show you pictures when the lake was much, much lower than it is now. I don't know uh, if Lake Pontypow it was, I don't know if Payne Boulevard was built then. It's not a very old development as developments go. And it, it may be relatively new. The houses there look like mm, they might've gone up maybe in the sixties. So I'm not sure. I'm but, not sure but, of the dates. So but, but, but really, there's no difference between the water going through the Redding drainage canal. So let, let me jump, let me jump in here. So we're not getting real productive right here. Okay. So let's, Elaine will contact you tomorrow, Dennis, and um, try to get a, you know, a time where you guys can meet tomorrow and look at, you know, the pictures, look at the situation in real life and we'll take it from there. Um, and then we'll pick it up next time we meet. Okay. All right. Thank you for your All time. Right. Thank you. All right, thank uh, you. I very much appreciate what you're doing. And I will work on getting my Zoom skills up to par. Yes, we'll have you train Jimmy next week. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a right. challenge. Thank you. <laughs> thank and you. Matt, thank you. All right. Uh, is there anything else to discuss regarding 200, 400 corner power? Or are we good? Can I just ask, did the commission receive a list of um, wet basin locations that they could review? I haven't, I haven't, I don't have any, I didn't get anything. And when Matt said he had revised drawings, I don't have well, any. Well, Nick Delacava said he was going to submit them a couple of times, but I don't know if you've ever received anything. We, so we've, we've sent in a, a revised, a few revised. No, 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 he, no, no, he was going to send a list of um, sites where there were functioning wet basins that the commission oh. Right, They've right. been asked for a couple of times, and I don't think a list has been provided. I was just wondering what has happened with it. I, I can there, follow. Are there some wet basins that can be reviewed? Mm -hmm. Yep, we, we, I, I'll follow up on that, and I'll make sure for the next meeting that we have it. Thank you. All right, anything else? Okay, um, Elaine, any other business that you have? No, I have nothing more. Can I just confirm, so I'm oh, sorry, with this project, then um, the two mats and Elaine and or Rebecca are going to meet, is that correct? Along with the town engineer. And possibly yeah. Jimmy. I'm gonna be there. Good. But I, I have a question from Matt. M Matt, didn't... Did you say that you guys sent out new revised drawings? So um, I think what Matt Byrne might be referencing is, uh, so we, we have not sent it, we have not officially sent in uh, new drawings. We have some drawings that we were working on that I believe we sent, our engineer may have sent to Matt Byrne, but you know, until, until we have more consensus, I, I, until we have more consensus on on what we're doing here, I think we're going to hold back on having you review new drawings. Okay, I see. I didn't realize that. I thought that was a that had been submitted. It it, it may have been. I I'm just not totally sure that it has. So I, I can. Yeah, I I received an email with a uh, link from Mitch uh, out of Goddard on Tuesday. And so did, and so did we. Yes, you did. That's what oh, I was yeah. referring to. Okay, so those would be the new plans. Yeah. So we should look at those. Uh, <laughs> you're, free to, you're free to look at them. Yeah, I, I think, you know, our, our perspective candidly is, you know, we are, we feel pretty comfortable where we are inside of the regs. Um, and at this point, we're trying, we're, we're trying to make further improvements just for the general satisfaction of the commission. We'd be more than happy to continue to work on those. I think what we provided on Tuesday, I wasn't aware, uh, maybe I was on that email, but I wasn't aware the entire commission had them. I believe that's a step in the right direction of where uh, I'm hearing the peer review might want to go. Um, but they might be and, revised. And, I, I, yeah, and, I, and I, I think that, you know, I think we're happy with the, the plans, that, those plans that you would have received on Tuesday, but I, I just want to see if, if there's more distance we can go through, you know, incorporation of the comments of the peer reviewer.
Okay, anything else? All right, so how, um, I guess how we, somebody's gonna send an email or an invite out so that uh, Matt, Matt, Jimmy, Elena, Rebecca can, can get together. Yeah, Matt D'Amico is going to send that out, right? Okay, that's correct. Okay, okay. great, great. All right, anything yeah, else? Elaine, I'll, I'll email you tomorrow if, if I don't see um, if I don't see that email come in. Um, okay, now do you have both our addresses, both Rebecca's address and my address? I, I do. Yep. Okay, um, I will tell you that I work Thursday afternoon and Friday mornings, and Rebecca works on Thursday, so probably the best time to find a time in common, at least for Rebecca and me, is to make it early on a Thursday afternoon, if that's just letting you know. We're Sounds both in good. the office at the same time for a couple of hours every week. We, we can make that happen. Okay. Excellent. Okay, is there anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right, thank you, Matt and Matt. Thank you, appreciate yes. the consideration. All right, Good night. Uh, so hearing nothing else, would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? I could read Teresa's lips. She's muted, but I could see it. Is there a second? I'll <laughs> second it. Okay, all in favor? Silvana? Yes. Teresa? <laughs> Jimmy? Yes. Ken? Yes. Frank? Yes. Sorry. Jimmy, I said you. Did I call you Jimmy? Yeah, you did. Okay. Okay. I also uh, vote to adjourn. All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs>